Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene. My I'm Joanne. Our host, Joanne, is here. And welcome, as I said. If it's your first time tuning in, thank you for being with us. Um, Beacons of Balance is all about being in balance. We work, live in a world of duality, which is up, down, left, and right. We really want to be in the middle as much as we can to be in balance. And, and right now, this world is such a chaotic, crazy place. So we share with you each Wednesday, we're on each Wednesday, um, different topics to help each and every one of us get into that space of being in balance. So we bring on a lot of times many special guest speakers to speak on different topics. And today, you're just getting the delight of having Joanne and I. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And we have a great topic, actually, we're going to talk about, and it's how to talk to your body. How do we talk to our bodies, Jillian? Wow. Well, first, you have to understand that you only have one temple in life, right, Arlene? Yes, the soul goes on and on, but we've got to take care of this temple. And we're going to cover many aspects of how you can talk to your body, mm -hmm. how you see your body, what the different body parts mean when they're out of balance, which is all about our show, right? Right. So we're going to we're going to shed a lot of light on that. There's, um, I came across, actually, there's, they say there's three steps to um, talking with our body. And the first is the approach your body with genuine compassion. Yes. Are we really compassionate when we look at ourselves and talk to ourselves? Most of us don't. We're always, we have this dialogue either in our heads or we're saying it to ourselves that we're not good enough. We failed short. We're, you know, all of that chatter that goes on. Our bodies are made of consciousness cells, believe it or not, and they express emotions. Do you know that we have trillions of cells that listen to our heart? You know, one's connected to the other. We're not disconnected. We don't have individual, you know, like this is a hand, this is an eye, this is an ear. It's all connected right. together. It's all connected. Very important. And our emotions drive and our cells, they drive all this. The other thing is to trust, enjoy your body and um, wait and trust and engage your body in mental conversations about your desire for the two of you, the two of you, your body and you to cooperate and to overcome any type of ailments that you may have. Exactly. And gratitude, as you know, Arlene is key, right? Yes. We've got to be grateful for every part of our body because it's a, it's like I'm, I'm always amazed, Arlene, that the body, I see it as this, it's like the most amazing computer. When you think of all the billions and billions of parts that make up a human body, mm -hmm. and if one gets out of kilter, sometimes it can still operate, not fully functional, but that always blows my mind that there are so many aspects to a human body, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all the functions. Well, yeah. amazing. It's amazing. It's a miracle. There really? is something that's called, that I looked up, it's called, um, we call it a hundred year lifestyle. And it's all about understanding who you are as a person and how you can help yourself. You know, all the doctors out there, what are they quick to do? They're quick to get their pad and prescribe a pill, take this. Yeah. And They're symptomologists. And our they society, the symptom. Yeah, our society is so used to that. And humans have lived for thousands and thousands of years, um, you know, healing themselves, finding the answers within themselves. I'm not saying anything. We're not say, preaching here to not go to doctors who do anything like that. No, you have to. You have to be checked out. Um, but we, our minds and what we say and what we talk have a lot of influence on how this machine runs. Correct? Exactly. And no one knows your body better than you do. So always listen, and you know when your body's out. Well, we're done. You know, it's there are some people that can walk around for years with their heart in arrhythmia, beating irregularly. But if you're a if you're a sensitive, a true sensitive, I mean, I can't operate if my if something's out of whack. It's just me personally. I can't speak for anyone else. But um, we've got to take care of these bodies. Speaking yeah. of that, our bodies are sending us messages if we're aware of it or not, constantly it's sending them up. And some people do get that racing cart where you talked about arrhythmia and that. And right. um, 
you know, throws their energy is from maybe a nervous situation. Maybe you're nervous about having a conversation with a particular person or sure. going in to talk to your boss over, you know, all of a sudden you, you, you find that you're speeding up and could send you totally off. Or you could go the other way and your energy could be very low. It could, because that could drain you. So it sure. could be a space of that. So you have to be exactly. you know, aware of it also. Exactly. You know what I always think of, Arlene? Do you remember back in, I think it was the 90s, Dr. Emoto would talk about yes. the language yeah. and words. And he would put different words attached to different beakers. He did it on the food. water, on water. And he'd freeze the water, remember? And he did the photography on the water. And he would exactly. show Exactly. For people that are aware of it, you could look it up, but he would show if you said, I hate you and you're ugly, it would, okay. um, the shape of the water actually looked, believe it or not, like a snowflake design, right? It was sacred geology. It was all like that. And it, when you said the words, I hate you, you're ugly, it would all be disfigured. Distorted. Being distor and then when you say, uh, you're beautiful, I love you, it would oh, I'm getting chills off. I know. We come together in this beautiful, perfect formation. Uh, right. He did the same thing with rice, where they put rice in a glass. And every day they would, you know, he'd have two glasses of rice. And one, they would just mock and belittle every day. And the other one, they would just send it love. And and I'll tell you, the one where they talked mean to it every day, it started growing mold. So, Arlene, if our bodies are... 80 something percent water and we're walking around with these t-shirts with negative comments on it like i'm with idiot or i mean i see this all the time at fairs and festivals i'm sure you've seen this early right or the f word across or whatever it's negative i keep thinking what is that doing to the chemistry in that water exactly something to think about that's a and good gives, You know, I never thought of that about shirts that we wear at words on it. Yeah. Walking around with that. I've seen the I'm an idiot. I'm like, what? Yeah, I, I want to go up to him. Like, what are you thinking? Actually, actually, I'd have some good ones, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it would be fun if we just took it from the top down, you know, like starting with the eyes and what all of our organs actually mean. And gets pretty interesting when you work on you know i've worked on over oh, thousands and thousands of clients you start seeing patterns and it, it gets really interesting i we we have to write a book about this early i mean you've worked on a lot of clients your, yourself but with the eyes you know if you've got any kind of eye problem it's like a lot of the scientists will say well what are you seeing really right um, when you get into the nose or the breathing, anything with sinuses, maybe you're afraid to breathe in life. And of course, we know there's bacteria out there and there's scientific, you know, the doctors all have their take on this. We're simply showing you a different way to look at this, right, Arlene? Right. That's all. And don't take anything, don't believe anything we say. We are, we are going by we don't know what we're talking research. about. Research. Because of a doctor watching this, they would say we're crazy. But there is a spiritual That's aspect. That's their opinion. There's an energetic, there's an energetic explanation for this as well as, and, and that's all we're showing you. We're showing the energy side of it. But you know, I want to make a comment on that, what you said when people can make a commentary about it. And this right. is the way it is. You know, I've listened, as you have also, we've gone to so many workshops through the years and listened to what we think the professional. And a lot of them now are scientists, doctors are saying, you know what, what I said before, and Eckhart Tolle's good with this. That's what he talks about being in the now. Because yes. we believe now, tomorrow may change. It may be totally different. So we have exactly. to be malleable. We have to be, as I always say, like the willow tree, we have to be able to bend and be flexible. So be flexible. We don't know. It's the thing is, life is a mystery. It is. And Arlene, you brought up an excellent point. You know, back in the day, the doctors, if they didn't learn it in college, it just didn't exist. But now they're starting to realize you can't ignore energy. You just can't. So I think it gets very interesting. One of the things well, we I- we are. We are energy. Energy is it. Energy. Everything's moving, as you said. Every cell is alive. It's a, Every cell is its own universe. Yep. And 
you know, there was a point where we thought the brain was the most important organ in the body. And now after all the research that, you know, they found that even the heart is the, is the powerful. That's where it's all, everything starts with the heart. So you've got to love that body of yours. Love every part of you. Okay. Big word. Here's a perfect example, Arlena. You know, people that have thyroid problems, anything with a neck, I find that those were the people that were told to shut up in life growing up as children. They lost their voice. And let's face it, you know, Arlene, in the 50s and 60s growing up, we weren't allowed to be near the adults having conversations, right? Weren't you always told, leave the room, this is for adults only, or or we would bring up an idea, like, what do you know, you're just a kid. You know, your voice, your voice doesn't count in this conversation. And sometimes these children, especially today, Arlene, right? Yeah. These are the old souls coming in. You have to listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. So I found we're working on so many clients that I have, the ones that have the all the neck problems, they have um problems that come back on a regular basis, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. When I interview them and I find out the source, it always, always goes back to I was told to shut up as a child. I was told my voice doesn't matter. And it even could be from past yeah. lifetime. Yeah, and a lot of these things are generational. Because things of course. Every and even <laughs> you could bring this in from past life. Now I realize a lot of you out there don't believe in past lives, but there's been a lot of research on that as well. People that have been hung, you know, in a past life, had trauma. Um, you name it, gunshots. I <laughs> I, I, I know I was. I know I was people. shackled. I was shackled in those days. My neck and my wrists. I, yes, I have to have everything. It has to be loose and hanging. I can't stand anything tight. I feel like exactly. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. We've probably done the guillotine trip. Oh yeah, <laughs> you and I. Are you kidding? We probably were next to each other. I know. We were the ones that always spoke up and got in trouble. Off to the gallows with you two. <laughs> you troublemakers of the village. <laughs> and then when you go down to the the, the breast, the women's breast, this is this is where it gets really interesting, Arlene. I've learned so much in doing research on this. Uh, we're going to talk about breast cancer. So what I found, the women that have breast cancer in the left breast, that's over the heart, those are the ones that have had the most emotional issues. You know, maybe they've dealt with a lot of... Um, heartbreak, the husband left them, um, they've lost children, anything, think of heartache, heartbreak, and it affects the heart. It affects that whole area. So think of your tissues, your breast tissues as they're nurturing, right? Right, right. And we found that the women that had breast cancer on the right breast were the ones that ex were exposed to chemicals. Isn't that interesting? So then I started doing research and I interviewed like 30 of my clients that had breast cancer. And wouldn't you know it, always the ones on the left breast, they were the ones that had some type of heavy emotional duty stuff. And then I even looked at my own mother who died of breast cancer really? and hers was on the right side. And when I think about it, they soaked their house in a chemical that is now banned. Uh, it was for killing ants. And I'll tell you, there's some there's something to this. And uh, you know, I know a, a cardiologist really well here, um, and he we have a long, deep conversation, Arlene. You know, where he says, you know, I think you've got something. You know, he's I I realize now, and that a lot of my cardiologist doctors are realizing that emotions do play into heart issues. How can it not? Well, there is the thing where uh, people say after, you know, like you're saying, someone, either they, they were widowed, widowers, or um, divorce, whatever, and they'll say, I have a broken heart, and there is the syndrome, yes. there is the syndrome of broken heart. Syn of course. Or and that can lead to... That's emotions. Right. And, emotions. and we're not saying, you know, don't forget, there's also medical issues, too, where you could have, you know, valves that are deformed or blocked. Sure. That's a whole different issue. And another thing is our nutrition that we're putting in, too. Cause exactly. The foods are not the same, Arlene, right? The toxins, the processed stuff. Where the right. Back in the 50s, I mean, we didn't have all these additives that we have now. The soil was much richer. The soils are deplete now. 
Oh. And having all this stuff, it's not even real. I uh, hear about soils. Guys, look up Dr. Zach Bush. I'd love to have him on. He's a genius. Wow. And he, he says to wonder where even we he said to wonder where you're upright and vertical. It is it uh, is. What we've done. And I know where I used to live in Connecticut, Arlene. Um, you know, I ran a show for a long time there and so I knew a lot of these vendors and one of the vendors, her little girl, eight years old. Okay, they just they moved into this house like maybe five years prior. And the little girl, eight years old, they discovered she had ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer in an eight-year-old. And when they started doing research, they found that the house that they moved into used to be built on a territory where there was an aluminum smelting plant. So all of that aluminum went into the aquifers, and that was the water that they were drinking. Well water, yeah, yeah. So I'm telling you, the water does play a big part in what we're drinking. It does, but I'm, I'm going to interject one thing that people are going to be like, mm -hmm. and yeah. I talk to it, and I'm just going to share this with everyone. I believe, and I've shared this on other parts, of uh, blessing, what we have, our blessing of the meal. I think it goes back from eons ago when we were in the desert and we had these things, and, you know, Saul ate some pork with milk and he died. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> Or so. so it was like, okay, don't do that. I believe that's where the Jewish thing with eating the pork and the dairy and all that, it came from that. But then they, they folded it into their religious beliefs. But I, that's my thought and theory. And yeah. I believe with that prayer before the meal or the blessing, yes, we need to bless to say we're in gratitude. We're in gratitude for everything that's on that plate or whatever we put in our mouth, what it's serving. Yes. But the other thing is I think it's very Power, we're powerful. When we say those words, we could really change the chemistry of that, what's going into our body. So in other words, take in what's nutritious and good for us and leave the rest of it, let it flow through. So you could change that. And this goes to anything. I do it with my supplements that I take. When I had the um, vaccination, the COVID vax, when it was going in, I was blessing it that I would just receive what I needed and the rest that was toxic and horrible for me to, to leave the body. And I talked to a scientist and the doctor about this, mm -hmm. said he had um, information on that, where the sector of our population, where they speak in tongues and they do this religious rite and everything, they had people that actually had um, venomous snakes bite them and they were fine. And then they even drank strychnide and they didn't die. So it's got to be something to it. Powerful we are. Exactly. And, and I'm just sharing this because we are in a very chaotic world and we're in a very toxic world as far as how you want to you know, label it right now. And there's things that we could do. You don't have to fall victim and think we're so helpless and turn over our power to pharmacology and that. Exactly. So I'm going to say enough. <laughs> you know, they still sell whole foods out there, Arlene, right? I mean, you don't, I watch everything with the chemicals. If you can't pronounce something, don't put it in your body, right. basically. Right. And that's what whole foods are. So, and I find that if I, if I've been out partying or whatever, and, and we, well, we're all human, right, Arlene? We've all had our days where we just ate whatever we wanted. No. Just, <laughs> not us. Not Everybody us. else, not us, Arlene. Not us. <laughs> hail us. <you> know? <laughs> I just go on a juice fast, you know, and <laughs> detox your body, basically. So let's look at the next um, part of the body. Let's look at the back, uh, the wide part of the back. Anyone who has issues with the wide part of the back, you know, I call it your angel wings, that whole area. You're that is usually where you hold guilt. So if you're prone to back aches in that area, what are you guilty of? And then if you go a little bit lower down your back, you know, the low back, I'm sure you've all heard this if you're in the spiritual uh, world, is anything with the back is you don't feel like you're having enough support in life. Who's not supporting you? Mm -hmm. Or it could be financial, worried about finances. Oh, definitely like, when you go through financial, man, your back starts. Low back is all about lack of finances. Yeah. Who, how am I going to pay for this? Where is this money going to come from? Um and then you look at the arms. Arms are very powerful. Um, 
anything with arms, it, well, especially people that are prone to a lot of hand injuries, those are the ones that are gripping on. They don't want to let go of life. They're just holding on to something and they won't let go. So that's a, it's a fear base. Um, we, all had, we all had issues with our body somewhere. So pay attention to where you're prone to injuries. Do you have anything else to add? Because I could, I mean, I've got a million, we can be here for 20 well, hours. Yeah. I mean, it's so, this part is so interesting to me. Well, fear based also on, you know, a lot of us walk around with fear. We, well, I think, you know, we, we do come across it, you know, I mean, there's no denying. And you have to feel right. the, the thing is not to get locked into anything. Exactly. And you know, our definition of fear is false evidence appearing real. And exactly. So, think back i always tell people think back in your life when you were going through something horrific or whatever and then you've gotten through it you get to the I always do you get to the other at the moment that we're in that situation arlene don't we always we panic yeah. and you think, oh my god it can't get any worse than this i don't know how i'm going to get out of this situation i always say stop mm -hmm. think back to when the last time you did that to yourself right. and you got through that somehow you got through it but at the moment you're in it, it's like no one can talk to you. You think, no, 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 this is it. There's no solution to this problem, right? Right. So that's so, so gone further as we move along. All right. So, then I will... so let's look at the hips because that's a big one. A lot of people have hip problems. <laughs> so with hips, a lot of that is afraid to move forward in life. You know, it's like we've all been there. We've all been at those conjunctions and those junctions in life where we're like, what am I doing? Am, am I supposed to be in this business? Am I supposed to be living here? It's like, am I supposed to be with this spouse? We've all been there as human beings. We second guess ourselves. So again, it's a fear thing, right? Anything with legs, any part of your legs is fear of moving forward. But if you go to the knees, going down to the knees, those are the ones that if you have constant knee problems, are you being flexible in life? Are you being one of those little stubborn bunnies? Because <laughs> that's what the knees are, flexibility. Going down to the ankles, same thing, moving forward in life. And then the interesting thing when we get to the feet, Arlene, I find that all I have to do is look at the balls of someone's feet in a session. And if they're heavily calloused, I know that they might have problems with bronchitis, having trouble with breathing, because in in feng, well, in well, the old Chinese medicine, they look at every aspect of the feet and the body, and that area of the feet, the balls, represent your lungs. Right, right. Okay, the so big toe is your brain, so your much, head. Yeah, with that, that's like reflexology also. There's iridology, looking at the eyes, is the heat. Exactly. The it's, I mean, this topic is so interesting. Body. I mean, I could sit here with you and just talk all day about this. Sure. Um, the big toe, believe it or not, when I look at someone's feet, you know, if I'm at the at the foot of the bed, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at someone's big toes, and if there's a big callus on the inside of the, or the outside of the toe, they have mother issues. I don't know what it is. It's, you know, it's all tied in with the head. There's also the second from the last toe on the bottom of your foot. Anyone having sinus problems? Okay, that's where you'd want to put your oils, your you know, your eucalyptus sinus oils. You put it right where that crease is underneath that second the toe, right next to the baby toe. That represents the sinuses. It, I mean, it gets really interesting. Uh, anything where the heel is, that's all the intestinal area. Yeah. Um, so. So I think what we're sharing with everyone is there's things that we could do ourselves. Yes. So just don't fall apart. And, you know, there's alternative ways. I think we're going back to the holistic ways. Because if you think of all our meds that are out there, where did they actually start? I mean, penicillin was a fungus that grew. Right. That was the pure form was from a fungus. And everything else is compounded from it was from flowers and herbs and they say yeah our earth is wonderful what was created they say like where there's poison ivy right next to it is the anecdote that'll take the poison right. away if you take yes. that plant or flower of course we've depleted 
the land. So we've destroyed a lot of that that goes hand in hand with each other. You know? Right. You know, one thing, Arlene, um, sure. when I lived in Connecticut, on our property, there was a lot of mullen that would grow. I don't, are you familiar yeah, with mullen? Yeah, mullen. You use mullen tea for congestion. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a yellow flower, very tall stalk. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, the pioneers used that. Yeah. For anything with bronchitis, uh, anything with congested nasal that drip. Yeah. You know, um, I swear to this day by mullen tea. I don't care what the doctors give you. The mullen stops it right in its track. Get mullen tea. You could buy it loose and I steep it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, yeah. that is a miracle. When they say God created every plant to heal this world, they're not kidding. Yeah, well, there's but, books out there on that that people can look into. But what we're talking about here also is how do you talk? We have the ability we don't need all the bells and whistles with the other stuff. When you go to bed at night and you're just lying there, you know, be quiet. And, you know, if you're having something going out with your heart, talk to it. Your lungs, talk to it. Talk to them. Say, I love you. I love you for what you, you're doing for me each moment in this life. The exactly. You do for me. Don't begrudge yourself and go, oh, this body is so, you know, it's breaking down. It's it, Be mindful of the work. We always say this is more power. I've always said this is more powerful than nuclear weapons. And I'm pointing to my mouth. What comes out of it are words. That you know, what's the one thing I hear the most in a, in a grocery line, Arlene? Oh, my back is killing me. No, cancel, clear, delete. Yeah. You have 12 seconds to say cancel, clear, delete. What you put out there. Hello. Focus on growth. Yeah, so there's a good one. I always bring this up. And we've all had where we've had fillings. Well, younger people probably don't anymore. But anyways, we used to have fillings and they would fall, you know, some of them would fall out and there'd be a hole. And what ha What do you do immediately? Your tongue, your tongue keeps going. Playing it. Going, it keeps going over. You keep rubbing and rubbing. And then you start thinking, oh my God, now I have to go to the dentist. Oh, this is going to hurt. I'm going to have pain. And then all of a sudden it goes, bah, bah, bah. It starts throbbing. Yes. You and gave it, that power. It's what we feed it. It's what we're saying to it that, emulates that you know exactly so and the other thing i found that people that are always in fear and i know clients that are literally every minute of their day they are in constant fear those are the ones that have all the kidney issues they have the cysts on the kidneys all kind of urinary tract it's amazing yeah. so if i scan a body and it's like something lights up if the liver lights up i know they have father issues that's usually where you hold father issues, anger issues, fear is kidneys. So be mindful of your language. Arlene and I have, my gosh, how many times have we spoken about this, Arlene? Yeah, I know. How powerful your words and thoughts and, are. Yeah. And, and we if we have to keep reminding you every day. We all have our days that go by, we hear something or whatever. And the right. thing is, don't say, oh my God, I've lost it all now. No, if you hear it, just see it like somebody walking across a stage. Okay, this is, it's just going by, let it flow by, and then go back to being positive, laughing, loving. I right. said laughing and loving. Yeah, I'm certified in laughter yoga. And what is yoga all about? Yoga is about our breath. So when we laugh, we're pushing our diaphragms up. So that's why it's called laughter yoga. We're actually forcing our, our lungs up, but we're doing it where we're not you know, stretching and everything, but we're laughing. So... I mean, my lungs... And you're releasing certain chemicals, aren't you, with that, Arlene? Exactly what? Oh, really? You're releasing certain chemicals. Endorphins in that, yeah. Laughing. Endorphins. So important. There have been people, you know, I know um, Norman Cousins, uh, he was the doctor of uh, healing himself. Well, actually, he started a, a ward in his name for cancer people to overcome. But he did close himself in his room for three months and watched, like, the Three Stooges and that. And um, I'm telling you, the cancer people, the people I know, the clients I know that had cancer that were totally in remission were the ones that laughed every day and found humor in something about it. And, you know, my sister was one of the, oh, my gosh, the, the doctors all say there's no way she should be alive because she had the rarest cancer ever. They use her as a medical. Uh, they talk about her in medical books now. Yeah. And every day I'd get on the phone with her. 
and we would laugh about something. We would laugh till we'd cry. Yeah, yeah, after. We, here she is. The yeah. doctors just shake their heads when she goes for visits. Yeah. I can't believe you're still alive. Yeah. She is like unbelievable. And she'll tell you laughter, laughter. Laughter's been my easy. salvation. Yes. Yeah, and always know this anger plus resentfulness. Oh. Plus resentfulness equals disease. Yes. So when, you know, the people that are negative and it, it hurts me when, you know, because I have family members and that, that are, you know, and you want to almost shake them, but you can't. Everybody's on their journey and their path. They have to find it out right. themselves, you know. But I always tell everybody, you know, you were born in a perfect state of ease, joy, and grace. It's not until you start looking at things negatively mm -hmm. that everything becomes dis-ease. Mm -hmm. That's all disease is. It's dis-ease. Right. So yeah. love your body. Love oh it. And also, it's it's like, how do we hear our soul? How do we hear that? It is very, and they're talking more and more and more about meditation. That's what I'm hearing about a lot, meditation. For me to get quiet, none of us, you know, everybody's in this chaotic world of move, 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 move. You always have to do something, do something. Nobody knows how to be still. And right. I think meditation comes in different forms. You know, just being outside and going for a walk in nature, looking at the clouds and hearing the birds, and that's a form of it. It doesn't mean you have to sit in a lotus position like this. Sure. Yeah, you know, that's fine. You could do that. And um, so meditation is one. Chanting, you know me. That's not. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Are we going to go into zippity doo dah again? Uh, uh, intuitive writing. <laughs> Where you know, yeah, I had a workshops every week where we did um angel riding. I called it angel. Sure. That's did, very powerful. And what I loved when I had the circles, because we would share afterwards what we had written, and many times a person would get a message for somebody. It didn't make sense to them, but it made sense to the person directly across from them, right. or it made sense to them later on, um, in life. So it, it, that's that's a very powerful thing to do, also. And so, Arlene, tell them how to do the journal. How do you start it? How do you journal? What, Remember what Luke? we had always started with, you know, uh, dear, whatever your name is? Like, Yeah, yes. You could start. Dear Arlene, and then ask the angels, what is it I need to know now? What is and it just I need start to... writing. Yep. It may not make any sense to you at all. No, and it's it's the thing is not to analyze it. Right. I, I had somebody, you know, that wrote like five question marks. And they exactly knew what it meant. And then somebody else wrote the musical notes or numbers, and they knew what it meant. <clears throat> and okay. um, that's it's very powerful. It's very it's 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 amazing. So people that want to have that connection, a lot of times they'll say their loved ones don't come in dreams. Somebody that they've lost. Well, you could do it through the writing. Exactly. Get things, and and you'll know. You know, first you're always going to question. You think, am I nuts? This is what I'm writing. Right. But you'll see sometimes that the writing changes. You don't, and you just put down what what it is. So if you hear the word, you're writing a sentence, and you hear here, and it should be literally, it should be H E R E. But you write H E A R. Right. Don't change it. Don't go back. Don't change take it. Take it. Just leave it. Leave it the way it is because it's important. Right. And yeah, so that's very good. And also connecting with nature. That's another big thing I've heard that we need. We came, we came into this place, um, I was just listening to Dr., um, actually Dr. Zach Bush, and he was talking about this. When we came over here as pioneers, everybody had their plot, you know, people that had their plot only, they put fences around. And the uh. natives didn't understand this. They said, well, how are you going to hunt your food? How are you going to, we were dividing ourselves off from community and from everyone else. And that's the right. worst thing you could do. We need to be connected with each other. Even in, in Connecticut, Arlene. We don't need the walls. <laughs> we don't need Connecticut, it's the stones. Remember the stone walls? The stone. Because in Connecticut, they grew rocks, literally. I would pull <laughs> rocks out, they got a whole new crop. Well, where else were you going to put them? You'd start building fences with them. And that's how those walls. Well, there's a point. There. Yeah, there's some to that. It's not totally... Yeah really fence yourself off. When, you know, and we live, right. live in these boxes that are really 
we're breathing in toxins and that. So, um, but going back to nature, Arlene, it's like almost every pioneer knew that certain flowers had healing properties and the Native Americans. I used to joke with some of the cardiologists, I'd give them pop quizzes <laughs> to test them because they're so, they're so, um, Doctors chemistry love oriented. Doctors love us. <laughs> oh, we drive them nuts. I, I have. When I when they see me, my name's on the chart. They know my name. I don't know. Stay out of this room. Get away from us. <laughs> I would ask them. I said, "Okay, pop quiz today. What is the one flower that they used to use to heal any heart arrhythmias?" And they'd be like, "This this is God. Now you're making me go home and do research." Yeah, mm -hmm. I still love doing that to them. But it was the digitalis. Digitalis. Yeah. You know, but it was the flower was the fox glove. Yeah. That was the flower. So, you no, know, they had cures for everything. It's just now it's all being replaced by chemistry, which is the chemicals. It's yeah, that, oh, well, it's all good. Things will be changing back around again. Exactly. Always, you know, to end this, you know, just be mindful of the words we use. That's why I think this whole point is, you know, love yourself. Just totally love yourself. And, you know, you know, if you're angry and if you hate, and there's so much out there, right? We know this. We talk about this, right, Jillian? Yes. There's so much anger. I mean, you can see it on the roads when people are driving. That's where I see it a lot when you're driving. People are just so nasty to each other. And when just people think about this, when you hate yourself and you hate things, guess what? You're destroying yourself. So what we're doing is we're actually on this planet. It's not you know, I know there's global warnings and Mother Earth takes care of Mother Earth. We are the ones that are destroying it. And don't forget to show gratitude to every organ of your body. When I'm laying in bed at night, I always thank my heart. I'll say, thank you, heart. You beat constantly. You never go on vacation. You've never had a vacation. Thank you. I mean, can you imagine how many times that heart the body is wonderful. In a lifetime, we need our sleep because when we do sleep, everything slows down and it gives the gives the body our bodies these temples a, a time to rejuvenate and and work on on right. ourselves. And it, what amazes me is somebody was oh I forget uh, I was talking to a doctor or I was at a group with a doctor and he said when he they were doing the autopsies on someone they did an autopsy on this homeless man right right eventually passed away. And his heart was totally, had been like explode, was gone, was gone. Everything was clogged, every, every part of it was hardened and clogged. Guess, guess what? It built all different pathways around it. Wow. It kept itself going. And I, yeah, the body's I don't know amazing. what that's happened to. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing machine. It is. You know, it knows how to correct itself. So. It's, so, Joanne, I'm glad I know your machine. Oh, <laughs> and likewise, our. So, want well, to thank everyone for tuning in. Please share yeah. this. Thank you for watching with your eyes, listening with your ears, and um, remember to subscribe. Victor added a beautiful button down below that's easy to hit on to. And please leave your comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to hear in the future. We have wonderful episodes coming up with some terrific guest speakers and um, always the first Wednesday of the month I do a prayer meditation for the world please join in it's archived you could go back to these because we have archives on right. website beacons of balance and join us spread the word we want to share share these episodes that's what we're grow it, these are all it's all positive so exactly our cheers always Remember yes. to see the beautiful beacons of light that you are and shine it out to the world because we desperately need it. Be mine. Yes. And uh, thank you, my dear friend. This thank was you, Arlene. I love you. Love you too. Bye, guys. Till next time. Bye. Bye.